Before we leave section 10.2 behind, we want to think about the p-value a little bit more and the implications for p-value because that's a very important topic. Um, a lot of the science professors, nursing professors expect you to kind of just have a sense of what p-value means. So let's remember that the statistical significance means that we're able to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we had observed results from a random sample that were very unlikely due to random chance. Um, if the null hypothesis were true. So statistical significance means we get to reject. It's only significant if we get to reject the null hypothesis because the null hypothesis was assumed to be true. So why would letting it stand be of any significance to us at all? It wouldn't be, right? So what's important to us as statisticians is getting to reject that null hypothesis, getting to go with that claim that we're making in the alternative. You're always trying to support the alternative um, which is why you write about it for your conclusion. That's always your goal, right? It's kind of like you're a rebellious teenager and you're always trying to stick it to that null hypothesis, right? So the null hypothesis is always what you assume to be true about the world unless you can prove it otherwise. So would a p-value of 0.06 be a statistically significant result at the 0.10 level? Level meaning alpha, right? The alpha level. And the answer to this is, well, yes. Right? So remember that we get to reject the null hypothesis if your p-value is less than alpha, period, the end. Right? That's what makes p-value so awesome. You're always looking for a low p-value. Right, so we would reject the null hypothesis because our p-value is less than alpha, and that means statistically significant. We got to reject that null um, just like we wanted. We didn't want to take it anyway. So we are rejecting the null hypothesis. What if your alpha was 0.05 though? So if your p-value is 0.06 but your alpha is 0.05, uh, that's not so good for you, right? So that's a no because your p-value is not less than your null or than your alpha. Therefore, you're not going to get to reject the null hypothesis and that's not statistically significant. Allowing the null hypothesis to stand is of no interest to us, statistically speaking, that is. Right? Because it's what we assume to be true about the world in the first place. So allowing it to, to, um, to exist is no big deal to us. It's what we assumed. Now, is a p-value of 0.04 more statistically significant than a p-value of 0.06? And the answer to that is yes. So here's what you need to know. So you want p-values to be low, lower than alpha. And the lower they are, the better they are. The more you're going to get to reject the null hypothesis. Right? So consider if alpha had been 0.05. If alpha was 0.05, you would get to reject the null hypothesis with 0.04, but not with 0.06. That means that 0.04 is a more powerful p-value. The lower the p-value, the better, right? That is what you want. Lower p-values make better, more significant, get to reject null hypothesis more, good stuff, right? So you want low, low p-values. The lower, the better. There, I rewrote that. So the lower the p-values, um, we want low p-values, and the lower the p-values are, the better they are. Um, because you get to reject the null hypothesis more, and that's what's significant to you. Right? So the lower the p-value is, you get to reject the null hypothesis more often because it's lower, and that's a good thing. Oh, it just occurred to me. I'm writing all of that, and it's right there in that box because I put it there. So the lower the p-value, the better. Right? That's what I wrote in the box, and that's what I meant. Right? Right there. So lower the p-value, the better. All right. So now let's look at this. Which of the following... So um, your significance level is 0.10. So keep in mind that means alpha is 0.10. Right? So that's what they're giving you. They're giving you an alpha value of 0.10. Right? Which of the following p-values represents statistically significant results when performing a hypothesis test at that 0.10 level? Circle all, circle all that apply. Well, remember from 
the hypothesis test that we want our p-value to be lower than alpha, and alpha is 0.10 for us. So that means that the statistically, statistically significant ones would be anything that is lower than our alpha value. So that would mean 0.09 is significant. 0.11 is not significant because 0.11 is not less than alpha. 0.10 is not significant. And it says it has to be less than alpha. It does not say less than or equal to alpha. So that's no good to us. So it's got to be less than alpha. So 0.10 is no good. 0.01 is fine because that is smaller than alpha. 0.009 is smaller than alpha. And then so is 0 0.0092, right? Because that's a 92 in the tens, hundreds, thousands place, which is less than 0 0.10. So those four that I have circled, they are the ones that are statistically significant because you would reject the null hypothesis for all four of those because your p-value is lower than your alpha. Now, of those um, p-values listed above, which is the most statistically significant? Well, most statistically significant means you get to reject the null hypothesis the most. So what you want is the smallest p-value would be the best. Most significant. Statistically significant, I should say. So of those numbers, I mean all of them, the smallest one is actually the one over here on, oh, it's right here, 0 0.009. Now, you have to know a little bit about your uh, math to remember that 0 0.009 is actually a little bit smaller than 0 0.0092. This is 92, and this is, if you will, 90 in the tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousandths. So this is 90 over 10,000. This is 92 over 10,000. Well, 92 is a little bit bigger than 90. Therefore, 0 0.009 is the most significant. Oh, here, actually, I'll just put that up in the front. So the p-value of 0 0.009 because it's the smallest p-value, which means it's the best. Right? It's the most significant, will reject the most hypotheses with a p-value of 0 0.009. All right, now, of the p-values listed above, which one may indicate that we made an error somewhere and we messed up? Well, case you missed it, generally p-values are small things, right? We're talking about the area over in the tails for a test, right? So these small areas. Now notice they're all pretty small. They're all generally less than, what, 10%, 15%, 20% of the curve. Right? We have most of the curve left unshaded. And the one that might be a little bit concerning <laughs> is 0.992. That one. So let me, let me, color this one because that was our most significant. So let me give that a yellow because, oh, not yellow. Um, how about orange? Never mind, I made it green. All right, so this one right here, the 0.992, that's a bit worrisome. I think I'm going to do that one in um, pink right here. So that p um, value of 0.992 is very concerning because in general, um, we only want to shade a small amount of the tail for the p-value. So a p-value of 0.992 is probably an indication that we went the wrong direction on a one-tailed test. Like it was a left-tailed test, but we shaded to the right. So in general, p-values are very small. They're areas in the tail or tails. So if it's a single-tailed test, a one-tailed test, it's just the area in the left tail or the right tail, like a left-tailed test or right-tailed test. Or it could be both the tails together if it's a two-tailed test. But either way, it's a small amount. And so having it be such a large value of 0.992 means 99.2% of that curve was shaded. That's probably indicating that there's an error somewhere because usually p-values are very small, less, much less than 50%, for example, of the curve should be shaded for p-value for most problems if you do it correctly.